Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and before we will go into the main topic of this video, I would like to thank all the YouTube and Patreon supporters. If you are not one of them, please consider becoming one for as little as $2 a month. But now, let's go to the main topic, like I promised. Setting up your beta flight or INAV build. In theory, it's a super simple process because you have this wonderful wonderful software called the Betaflight or the INAV configurator. You connect your board to it, you set up everything and you go flying. However, however, what with the cases when you do not have a laptop at home or even worse, you want to set up something in the field? Let's be honest, taking your laptop is sometimes really not the best option because uh, this thing weights a little, this thing is big, this thing is bulky, you have to have place in your backpack and setting everything up on the on the flying field, even using the small laptop, can be sometimes irritating. And to be honest, on the field you do not really have to set up everything, usually only change some of the settings. Of course, for years we have the applications like, for example, EasyGUI uh, that allowed you to configure clean flight, then beta flight, then INAV, or for example, the quite popular and probably currently the best application to setting up your drone in the field, SpeedyB. Still, to be used with the SpeedyB app, app, you need some kind of the cable to connect the smartphone to the drone, um, or a Bluetooth adapter, or now you have the option of using this tiny, tiny yellow thing with a B logo, after all, SpeedyB and uh, Bs are black and yellow, right? Which is a Wi-Fi adapter that really probably is the next step in the on the field beta flight and INAV configuration. Let me change the camera angle and let me show you how to use the SpeedyB adapter too. The name kind of sucks, right? Um, with the SpeedyB app and any flight controller compatible with Betaflight and INAV. The SpeedyB adapter 2 looks like that. It's a, I cannot really say it's a box, more like three PCBs screwed together and a yellow heat shrink and this cable loop. Um, and probably the cable loop, the USB cable loop over here is the biggest problem with this adapter because um, there are two USB, micro USB connector over here, but only one of them can be used to connect the flight controller. If you use the second one, nothing will really happen. And look here, um, there is a text here on that directs to one of the USB connectors over here that says 2FC. Um, how should you understand that? Does that mean that this USB connector should be connected to the flight controller or that when you have the cable like that in the loop, you should take this side of the cable and connect it to the flight controller like that. Um, turn out that th this is the correct way and 2FC goes the one port that is not 2FC. It's kind of, for me, it was at least slightly counterintuitive and I really expected that if I want to connect something to FC, it should be, oh, not like that, it should be like that. This cable to flight controller. Turn out, no, I was wrong, it will not work. So it has to be like, ah, oh, come on. Come on. It has to be like that and this part goes into the flight controller. Let me take the flight controller, let me plug, this is the Foxeer F722 V2 by the way, uh, but if I plug it like that, nothing really happens, nothing is working. So uh, how is this, how this thing is supposed to be, to be working? Um, you need an XT60 battery, I have the power source instead of the battery, and all you have to do, all, all, that's quite a lot. You have to plug the battery into the adapter number two and you will see that the red light will start blinking. That means that the SpeedyB 
has the communication over the MSP protocol with the flight controller. The flight controller will be powered and now this thing started up the local Wi-Fi ne network to which you can connect. To which you can connect from the level of, for example, the PDB app. If I will open the PDB app, of course, I will have to wait for the ads um, because I'm not a premium member. Member, and if I will click the button of the Wi-Fi, it will say that I have to connect to the SB adapter to underscore for XS Wi-Fi. Let's wait. Okay, to the 8D. That's my. Your might be completely, completely different. And when I go back to the SpeedDB app, it will start connecting with. On some of the phones, you might get the information that you have to confirm and you do not want to disconnect from the Wi-Fi network that has no internet. Of course, we do not want to do that. So let me stay connected. And voila, we have um almost full blown does it rotate no it does not rotate we have almost full blown configurator on your phone with all the settings with all the pid tunings with the slider radio modes and so on and so on and so on so in the field you really can check up everything you need you want or you are obligated to do oh and by the way the green light means that everything the communication is up and everything is working everything is fantastic however uh, however you do have to remember that speedb app is not really the code of the beta flight or the inav configurator it looks almost the same but it's not the same we checked that, by the way, some time ago. So we know that this is not really the same and there might be some differences between the official configurator and the SpeedDB app. And what else? What else? It really does everything you have to do. And to be honest, I almost would stop carrying a laptop to the flying fields if this thing was supporting development versions of INAV. But because it's not supporting development versions of INAV, and for example, if right now I would connect the INAV 2.6 to the SpeedDB app, it would detect it's an INAV, but it would say, no, I will not work with the version of INAV I'm not aware of. But if you are just, just, if you are a user, not a developer, of either Betaflight or the INAV, then this is really an option for you that you might consider. The build quality, it looks good, it looks fine, um, it just works, accepts, I think, 6S, or it accepts up to 6S LiPo, so you just have the power source everywhere you need, and apparently it just works. However, personally, I'm not the biggest enemy of the Bluetooth version of this adapter, and for me, really, like the Bluetooth probably is slightly better option. It's slower, but then there is no problem that I lose internet when I'm connected to the Wi-Fi that does not offer the internet. Yeah. But from in the scale from uh, 1 to 10, I would give this thing at least 7. Um, it would have, if it would had the built-in LiPo, then I would give it a 10. Uh, but because it does not have the built-in LiPo, I'm going to even need a 7, but this is a very fair choice. And uh, it, if I would only use only stock enough, but I not. But if you're using stock, super option for you. Okie dokie, so that's all for today. Until the next one. Bye bye.